Hello Chrysler Fulcher, welcome back to the channel, old boy here, and today I just wanted to talk to you about a find that's been made during the excavation of a Roman bathhouse in Carlisle, Cumbria, that experts have branded as being of international significance. A chunk of Tyrian purple, which is a rare dye that is extracted from the Murex mollusk, was discovered last October and is described as being around the size of a ping pong ball. The mysterious lump was found in the drainage system of a Roman bathhouse and after months of testing, experts from the British Geological Society and Newcastle University have finally been able to verify that the lump is indeed the rare dye which is associated with the highest echelons of Roman society. Tyrian purple, which gets its name from the Phoenician city of Tyre, modern-day Lebanon, a region in which the dye was once mass-produced, is a dye that is extracted from the mucus of the Murex mollusk, a sea-dwelling snail which is found on eastern Mediterranean shores off the coasts of Morocco and North Africa. The time it took to collect the sheer quantity of snails and to process them was very costly and time-consuming, with an estimated 12,000 snails being needed to create just 2 grams of pigment. Frank Giecko, the technical director of the organisation leading the dig at Carlisle, has said it is an incredibly rare find, especially in Europe. It is the only example we know of in Northern Europe. Possibly the only example of a solid sample of the pigment in the form of unused paint pigment anywhere in the Roman Empire. Examples have been found of it in wall paintings like in Pompeii and some high status painted coffins from the Roman province of Egypt. Uncovering Roman Carlisle has described the Tyrian purple as cladding emperors and kings from the Bronze to the Middle Ages. It was present in Mycenaean palaces and was worn by the likes of Persian emperors Alexander the Great and Cleopatra VII. Roman senators and emperors also wore the purple, and in the post-Roman era it continued to live on as a symbol, hearkening back to the days of imperial Roman power, being worn by the likes of Charlemagne and the Byzantines. Sometimes the dye was used on clothes, in other instances it was used to decorate the walls of grand public buildings, such as those which have been recently discovered at Pompeii, as well as the houses and properties of the elite. Pliny the Elder, writing in the 1st century AD, comments on the dye in Book 60 of his Natural History. In Asia the best purple is that of Tyre, in Africa that of Meninx and the parts of Gaetulia that border on the ocean, and in Europe that of Laconia. It is for this colour that the fasces and the axe of Rome make way in the crowd. It is this that asserts the majesty of childhood. It is this that distinguishes the senator from the man of equestrian rank. By persons arrayed in this colour, our prayers address to propitiate the gods. On every garment it sheds a lustre, and in the triumphal vestment it is to be seen mingled with gold. Let us be prepared, then, to excuse this frantic passion for purple, even though at the same time we are compelled to inquire why is it that such a high value has been set upon this produce of this shellfish, seeing that while in the dye the smell of it is offensive, and the colour itself is harsh, of a greenish hue, and strongly resembling that of the sea when in a tempestuous state? Some ancient texts also describe how the dye was used in drug compounds, as a medical application, and within the rites of the mystery religions, and this is something we're going to be looking at in future episodes. Due to the fact Tyrian purple was the most expensive and sought after colour, its presence in Carlisle, along with other finds which have also been described as being of international significance, has led experts to hypothesise that the site has some connection to the imperial court of Emperor Septimus Severus. Other evidence which supports this theory include an inscription stone dedicated to Empress Julia Domna, the date of the building coinciding with Empress Septimus Severus's campaigns in Scotland, the general high quality of the other objects which have been recovered at the bathhouse, the fact that the local Celtic tribal capital at Carlisle was granted civic status, and finally a source which states that Empress Septimus Severus was actually in Carlisle. Let's take a look at that now. On another occasion, when he was returning to his nearest quarters from an inspection of the wall at Lugavallum in Britain, at a time when he had not only proved victorious, but had concluded a perpetual peace, 
just as he was wondering what omen would present itself, an Ethiopian soldier, who was famous among buffoons and always a notable gesture, met him with a garland of cypress boughs. And when Severus, in a rage, ordered that the man be removed from his sight, troubled as he was by the man's ominous colour and the ominous nature of the garland, the Ethiopian by way of jest cried, it is said, You have been all things, you have conquered all things, now, O conqueror, be a god. The dig has also yielded other significant finds such as 29 tiles branded with the imperial stamp, IMP, which stands for Imperator or Emperor, Roman window glass and fragments of polychrome wall plaster, which is indicative of a building of grand opulence, over 450 Roman coins, generally in good condition and predominantly dated to the 3rd and 4th centuries, 36 intaglios and over 100 beads, and finally a lead Alapetriana seal, which is one of only two ever to have been discovered. In addition to this, some rather unique carvings have also been discovered, and these include a partial bust of Venus, a stone carving of a dolphin, and two giant sandstone busts, which are described as being carved in a Romano-British style and measuring 56 and 57 centimetres in height, respectively. After much debate from leading archaeologists, it is generally thought the busts are representative of Roman theatre masks, and they would have been placed high on the building, looking down at all those who entered the bathhouse. It is generally considered these masks could avert the evil eye and protected those who entered into the building. Now I'm excited to announce that I'll be volunteering on the site of the bathhouse on the 10th of June and that I've also been granted permission to film, conduct some interviews so that I can make an episode from the site for you the viewers. I've also seen some interesting medical texts describing the medical application of the purple, as well as some religious texts which describe its use within the rites of the mystery religions. And this is something that we're going to be looking at in future episodes, so I hope you're all going to find that interesting. Once again, thanks to everyone who supports me in this channel, your support is much appreciated. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Old boy, out.